The aircraft propulsion system is a gas turbine. If you fly on any commercial <coughs> aircraft, you look out the window and you can see this big thing hanging underneath the wing, and there it is. So first of all, how do they work? Well, they take in air, they put it through a set of compression, it's through a compressor made up of a bunch of stages, rotating and then stationary stages to straighten the flow back out. So rotors and stators rotating and stationary. And you'll notice that the area is getting smaller because what's being built up, the pressure, and as the pressure gets higher, the density is higher and it doesn't require as much cross-sectional area. This illustration just out of wiki, uh, Wikipedia um, has one, two, three, four, five, six, you can start counting them, a lot of stages to the compressor. Then after that, the flow, uh, some of it is for cooling, but some of it goes right into the combustor. And it's a very special combustor because the speeds can be so high in here that they have to control the flame so that they get complete combustion. And then they have mixing with the flame to bring the temperature such that when it hits that first stage of your compressor right in here, so now you have a, a, not the compressor, the turbine, it won't be so hot as to damage it, but it'll be hot to extract a lot of energy that you want as high a temperature as possible, but it's limited by material considerations. And so you'll have a few uh, turbine stages to extract some power to drive the shaft back to the compressor so that you extract enough power out. Now, what else do you do with this power? Not much, okay? It's a jet engine. It just needs to feed itself to work itself. There's no shaft going out to drive an electric generator. So how does this work to get uh, propulsion? Well, you exit right here with very high speed, high kinetic energy, high velocity uh, gases, exhaust gases. It's about the same amount coming in, okay? So let's say this is so many kilograms per second coming in. It's about the same kilogram per second going out. There is a little fuel that's added, and so it did add some, but it's not the addition of the kilograms per second of the mass that give you propulsion. Coming out much higher speed than it came in at. And because of that much higher speed, the momentum, the linear momentum flow rate going out is much higher. So it's this concept of linear momentum that help you understand why uh, there's, um, it's kind of like force acting on it. There's a force acting on the gases to increase the linear momentum, but then the engine has to be supported or the engine pushes back with the force that way on the bottom of the wing. And those two forces are equal and opposite. So it's like something in your model pushes on the gases, the forward thrust. It's by kicking out the exhaust gases at the tail with a high, high speed. Um, you can see this concept, or probably you've seen this concept in practice um, in, in a lot of places, but what is the, if I have a chunk of mass of M, right, if I have it, what is its linear momentum? Maybe use the symbol L for linear momentum. Is it the product of M times V? So if it's traveling in that direction with speed V, it has linear momentum, true? Okay, let's say I start with that chunk. I'm sitting here on a cart, frictionless cart that can roll, and I have a bucket of uh, balls, right? And so I grab one ball out and I throw it that way. What happens to me in the cart? It goes backwards, that's right. What happens if I start throwing them out continuously? as best as I can every second I'm throwing one ball out. Well, then you're going to be feeling a, a near constant force or a thrust, uh, the cartwheel, because of the throwing it out. 
True? So it's like it came into the system. I know the balls really didn't come in, but they, if they, it's like they came in with no momentum, and yet they're going out with high momentum, going out. All right? And so you could think about the mass flow rate throwing one, two, whatever, how many you can throw as fast as you can throw them out, times the speed that they go out. True? True? Okay. Um, there's a lot of little games we can play with this. Let's do this. Uh, think about, you can pick one up and throw it out regardless if it's a tennis ball or a basketball. About one a second. Which one do you want to throw out? The basketball or the tennis ball? or even a worse, a ping pong ball, right, to, to get going. Which one do you want to throw out? You really, to get going in this direction, you want basketballs. You want to throw a large mass, you want a large mass flow rate, right? And then you already know that if you just sort of chuck the basketball a little bit, or if you really wing it, it'll have a larger thrust forward. So this concept of linear momentum Linear momentum, flow rate, force, impulse. I didn't talk about impulse. And thrust is very key. Mechanical engineers, you need to dominate that concept, right? How many people feel real comfortable coming out of dynamics with those concepts, right? That's really important. Because a lot of systems are understood and explained by the performance. Basically, you get the forward thrust is the product of the mass flow rate times the exit speed. And if you had any inlet speed, you would have to take that off. So it's how much of the increase in speed. So if you had the air coming in at speed V in, and you had the air going out at speed V exit, you would have this forward thrust felt because it's like it's trying to push back on the air but you'll have this forward thrust felt, and that thrust force is the product m dot times v, or delta v. What is, does it, do the units really work? How many, what, let's just chase the SI units. Kilograms per second, meters per second, true? Does these units work? Ah, what's a newton? Kilogram meter per second squared, so the unit, units definitely work.